Welcome back to another episode of Full Disclosure. I am Joe. I'm Martin. And we are here today. We are always on this show, dedicating it exclusively to bringing you up close and personal with notable authors, speakers, broadcasters, even social media personalities. Uh, they come from various different backgrounds, but we want you to be able to have these people on the show so you can learn more about their personal backstory. Uh, this is a very special to show today. Oh, it is? It is. Uh, we are, uh, somebody is breaking silence, finally. Wow. Yes, yeah, so somebody on social media whom many of us know and love dearly. Um, she is very prolific on the social medias. She is uh, upholding um, her version of the Catholic faith uh, very consistently, I might add, um, on social media. And uh, she is very focused on making sure that we all get the memo that the church is now what the church is. Um, Bad this, time. She, uh, we don't know a whole lot about her, actually, and we were thinking that that means that most people out there have not also heard about her. And so we thought that we would ask her to come on to the show. It's been uh, quite an ordeal. Um, it's been a little bit difficult. There have been several technical challenges with her, but um, her name is... Spill the beans. Spill the beans. Yeah. Her, name, her name is Susan from the Parish Council. Oh, Susan. Council. I, yeah, yes. I know Susan. Yes, exactly. And uh, she is from a parish, uh, the Church of the New Evangelization. I was I, we, we haven't even known what parish she belonged to. Powerful name. But uh, she is on with us now. Uh, Susan, how are you? H Hello. Hello. Uh, Susan? Susan, can you hear us? Hello. Uh, oh, yes. Hi. Thank you so much for having me on the show. Now, I can't see you, but I was told by my son, Pat. Um, and Pat, by the way, he told me that you guys were going to be dressed in suits, but not to worry that you're not these Protestants that I talk about on my faith-based account. Fa Are you there? Yep, yep, we're, he we're here. Can you mm -hmm. hear us all right? I can hear you. Okay, all right, well, that's good. That There was a lot of show prep that went into this. Yeah. Uh, because we were having problems with Skype, so we just had to actually make this a phone call. It seemed like things were a little bit difficult, but uh, but thank thank you so much, Susan, for for joining us. This has been a a real a real pleasure having you on the show. Um, I think that there are a lot of people out there who would like to get to know you a little bit more. Um, could could you kind of give us a little background about yourself? I mean, you you, you seem like you've been uh, you've been around for quite some time, and uh, there there must be a lot to to tell back there. I, I do have a lot to say, and as I said, I have a son named Pat. Okay. Now, my bishop's name is also Pat, and so sometimes it gets confusing when I talk about Bishop Pat and my son named Pat. Now, my son, my son has a husband named Johnny, and they have... My first grandchild named Chloe. Now, Chloe is kind of like a four-pod grandchild, but she likes to wear dog sweaters, you see. Hmm. And I go to the Catholic Church of the New Evangelization that John Paul the Great, Pope St. John Paul, talked about, and we're living in that new evangelization right now oh that's exciting gotcha yeah yeah no that, that that's very very exciting mm -hmm. so 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 where where are you where are you from originally well i was born in pittsburgh ah See, okay yeah yeah i grew up in kentucky oh wow and so i've been both to the north and the south and i can tell you that catholics really need to turn the clock forward. Since Vatican II, things have really changed in the church, and I think for the better, because these Protestants, and I hope y'all aren't Protestants, I can't see you, but if you guys are 
you the kind who want to turn the clock back, then I can tell you that I I don't even know is this show going to be on the YouTube? Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, like like mm-hmm. we talked to you before, we're we're going to broadcast this um, on uh, YouTube, and it will be available for that our audiences. Shows, yeah, I've, I've never been on YouTube before. I personally haven't, but I was just watching the other day this Oriental woman who was assaulting the pontiff in Rome. And on Christmas Eve, no less, she was totally out of line. And and yeah. St. Francis the Great, thankfully, he put that young Oriental in her place. Uh, you 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 mean you mean you mean you with the YouTube. you 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 mean you mean Pope Francis, right? Right. Didn't didn't he hit her? He he did. He did. Yes, yes. Pope Francis. He's the Bishop of Rome, the first amongst right. equals. Right. Okay. Okay. So yeah, no. So you said that you haven't been on YouTube before, but you've been you've been on Facebook earlier. You I th- I think you created a profile like some some earlier this year. Or last year, rather. I mean, we're in yes, the new year. Yes, we're in 2019, I, though. Yes. In fact, in fact, I have been on the on the faith space for at least a year. My my gay son Pat, he's really good with technology. You know. In fact, you should check out his Facebook page too. It's full of colors of the <laughs> rainbow, and he made me. All I have to do is I log into my phone and I can just say what I'm thinking at that time. And you would be surprised at how many people want to hear bless and amen. Yeah, no, I mean, it's been, you've been quite, uh, I've never seen a Facebook profile that, that grew so quickly. That was, that was very, very impressive. Why, why, why is it that, do you think that, uh, that your profile became, you're very, you comment very, very, very frequently. And I would just been very impressed at how quickly you've grown. Well, one of the things that I am passionate about is moving the clock forward and, One of the ways that we can do that, Joseph, is with ordaining women to the priesthood. Mm -hmm. And this latest synod down in Mexico is going to be the way that we do that. And President Trump wants to build the wall against the Mexicans, but... They're gonna lead us to women deacons. Okay, okay, okay. And a you, lot you, of people agree with me. You, you, you've, you've got me a little bit confused. I, I've seen a lot of people do like your posts. Uh, it, it's, I, I hear, I, I'm seeing a lot of, uh, of, of uh, cr- laughing faces and stuff like that. So it seems like they, they agree with you. Um, but, but I'm, I'm a bit confused about the whole Mexico thing. I thought that this was about the Amazon Synod. Well, so-called not my President Trump wants to start a war in Iran, and he killed that Persian general with a drone strike, and we're just a tool of the Jews. And so all I do is I go on the faith space, And a comment. And Mm. my friend Bev and I, which, by the way, I'm supposed to be playing bridge with Bev tonight. We do that every Thursday night at 6 p.m. And Helen shows up. Helen is our Paris event coordinator, and she does a great job. In fact, oh, thanks. Jeebus, that the Christmas season is finally over. I mean, I have to tell you, my favorite holy day is Halloween. Halloween. I love to see them kids dressed up as ghouls and goblins.
goblins and demons. It is just so fun. And I give them candy corn, I, and they are so funny. But, yes, I do believe that we have to tear down walls and build bridges. Okay, well, that that's that's really wonderful, Susan. I, I it, it it did um, pass my mind that uh, just before we go any further, that here on the uh, full disclosure show, that uh, that that hosting engagements are are not necessarily um, um, <clears throat> what shall we say endorsements of. <clears throat> guests on the show. So I, I just want to make sure that we go ahead and state that out front that nece- not necessarily uh, all of the views that are shared by our guests are shared by Restoring the Faith Media. But um, uh, on that, Susan, you, you, you set up a, a bunch of different things online, and you seem very, very much uh, invested in the uh, the cause for, for women in the church, like you mentioned, um, it seems like y'all have been uh, under your, under your guidance, you've been, uh, really working on, uh, improving things for women inside the church. Well, it's about empowerment and equality. Now, y'all youngins don't know about the time where I grew up, where women were relegated to taking care of the family and educating the children and nourishing the home. Today, we are unshackled from these walls that Trump wants to put us back into. And it's about Bringing the women, you know, did you know that we had women deacons in the first three centuries of the church? Now, my friend Jimmy Martin, SJ, he told me that they've got evidence of this. Now, they're looking all through the Vatican archive to find the evidence and I know that it exists I know it I know it in my old bones but Jimmy Martin SJ he told me they're going to find this evidence of these early deaconesses Hmm. and that will be all that we need from the Mexican Senate to get us where we need to go um, okay, so you, I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm still confused. You keep referring to the Mexican Synod. Um, yeah, I was just going to ask. Y- yeah, uh, could you could you tell us a little bit more about the Mexican Synod? What 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 was uh what was determined there? When was oh, this? Certainly, certainly. Well, things were going really well down in Mexico and the rest of the Mexican Latin America. And then this close-minded, backwoods Protestant, as I call them, he took this beautiful image of Our Lady, pregnant, in fact, with Our Lord Jesus. And she took the image of Our Lady, and you know what this Protestant did? He threw her into the Tiber. But thankfully, my friend Jimmy Martin and others, they speak German, and I don't speak German, but they fished her out of that river, and they put her back in the church. Our Lady's image, can you imagine? This is the Pachamama? She yeah, yeah. I thrown think... into the river. Yeah. I, I, I think that was in the, the Amazon. I, okay, well, I, any, anyways, I, it's neither here nor there. Um. I, we, we'll probably just we could move to the next topic. Yeah. So you you keep referring to your friend Jimmy Martin. And you you said that uh, is your son friends with him as well or? Oh, in fact, my son Pat, he used to serve with Jimmy Martin, and he was an altar server. Now at the time, I was you mean very, altar altar boy, very right? Progressive, and I didn't want to call him an altar boy or an altar girl. 
when you serve in the liturgy space and you are assisting the presider when he lifts up the bread and the grape juice, what difference does it make if you're a boy or a girl? But yes, my son, Pat, he used to serve with Jimmy. Gotcha. And they became very close friends. Hmm. Got it. Okay. Very, very close friends. Okay. Well, that, yeah. that's, that's, that's very nice. Um, okay. So, um, but there, there have been several different other things too. It seems like that you are a, a very big uh, fan of pronouns, um, and uh, th- there are several um, uh, uh, things apparently in the, in the patriarchal church that uh, have been labeled um, lab- labeled intentionally to kind of subvert the, the society to think that uh, that that men are the leaders in the church. Um, well, could you tell us a little bit about that? Talk about this Christmas season, which makes my bunions ache. I mean, good Lord, do people still send out Christmas cards? I just send text messages to my friends now. But one of the things that they still sing in these Protestant churches. They call them him. But my question is, why would we call him him? It's the church of the new evangelization that John Paul the Great founded. We call him hers. We sing hers for Christmas. I'm sorry. Did you, you said furs? That's a good idea. Oh, yeah. We don't sing him. We sing hers. Mm. Oh, okay. Um, all right. And, and so you, you sing in the choir as well? I am a tenor in the choir, in fact. But my friend Bev has been singing in the Catholic choir for 74 years since she was 23 years old. Wow. And Whoa. she can carry a tone. There what? are at least a dozen people that like to clap after Mass. Yeah. And that's basically everybody at the Mass. At the, at the presider's president's meal. At uh. the meal that we have together, all 12 people they like to clap after mass so are you a eucharistic minister oh sonny sometimes i'm the eucharistic minister and i distribute the wafers or the grape juice but since less and less people are coming to our church and more and more people are going to that closed-minded Protestant church, then I usually have a lot of grape juice left over. And since I'm allergic, I only like prune juice. Joe, is grape juice I take allowed? the grape juice, Great. and I just I'm not... pour it down the drain at the end of the meal that we all share together for our common salvation of all mankind. Oh, okay. So I'm, I'm kind of confused if it's grape juice or prune juice at this point in time. Uh, not that it really matters. Um, uh, yeah. So, so Su- Susan, um, so, so you, so you're a Eucharistic minister when you're not singing in the choir with Bev, um, what what other what other activities with the with yeah. the church are you involved with? Yeah, who are you? Well, tell us a little bit more. Yeah. In fact, in fact, I will tell you, young studs on this show, on the YouTube, that one of my pastimes is Magigoria. I love every day to check in to see what the lady from heaven 
is telling the seers at Magigoria that we need to do. And I have to tell you that I don't think that these rigid priests with their saternos and their dresses. You know, when I was coming up in the ranks of the Catholic Church, I've been Catholic for a long time. In fact, my third husband and I used to joke about how long it's been since I had to wear these dresses and these rigid priests with their hats that look like Saturn and their dresses, they call them cassocks, but we got rid of cassocks a long time ago. So are you, Martin are you saying that Pope Polo, Francis is a rigid, a rigid priest or a rigid pope? No, no, not He's at all. He's wearing a dress as well, pope isn't he? Pope Francis the Great. Sure. Pope Francis the Great and I are good buddies in fact i'm a big fan of pope francis the great in fact as a member of the parish council at the new evangelization church i propose that we change our name to francis the great but chad chad is a member of the parish council and he's one of these young, close-minded, conservative, orthodox Protestants. And he opposed me on the parish council. So I went to our priest, Dom, Father Dom, and I told him that Chad is a close-minded bigot. But Father Dom explained to me that Chad is the only young person left at our parish. And if we lose Chad at the parish council, then he'll just go to that Protestant church. Inter But no, interesting. Francis the Great, he is great, and I'm glad he slapped that Oriental woman because she was out of line trying to kiss his ring, slobber all over his hands. You know, these days, these priests, There are so few priests left in the world today because of these Protestants. They've got to wash their hands. They've got germs. You know, we've got science. And Pope Francis the Great, he might have gotten the bird flu from this Oriental. So I'm glad he yeah. slapped her. Yeah, yeah, you, you don't want the Pope getting the bird flu. Um Or the avian well, flu, the swine or, flu, yeah, the swine, uh, any of those things, yeah, no, you don't want that. Um, okay, Susan, I wanted to go back to something that you said earlier. You said your 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 third husband, and and, and your Eucharistic minister. So I, I'm trying to reconcile all of that. Um, I I know that Eucharistic ministers are are fairly common nowadays, but 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 you said your your third husband. Did the other two die, or or yeah. No, no, I'm very good friends with both of them. One of them, in fact, hangs out at the same clubs and bars as my gay son, Pat, and they've become very close. Um, like how close? So, no, they're both, they're both still living, and I was able to get those marriages annulled because annulments, today are sort of like Catholic divorce, easy to get, and they rubber stamp those puppies. So we just decided that we were better off separate. They still go to the church of the new evangelization, and one of my ex-husbands brings his good friend Charlie with him. And sometimes when they pray the Our Father, they hold hands. And it's, you know, it's a new church, and God made us the way that we are. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, There's a point there. Uh, all right. Uh, so. In fact, Charlie likes to bring 
the donuts. And he always gets the rainbow sprinkled donuts for after mass. And the one young family that's breeding like rabbits with their four children. Goodness gracious. Well, I I, uh, I, I have four children. They had a television and they didn't seem to answer my question. I mean, I like to watch the Golden Girls on Lifetime oh, and oh. Love Boat. Uh, wow. Okay, I, I'm not I'm not familiar with either of those, but um, uh, so so just to be clear, are, are are you are you unique at your church as far as being a third time or a second time, third time, second time divorcee? Oh no no, I don't think anyone at the Church of the New Evangelization is with their original spouse. Oh. You have to understand, Joseph, and don't be a Protestant when you ask me these questions. Yeah, Joseph. If you're in love, you're in love. And when you're not in love, then God wants you to be happy. Yeah, Joseph. That's what we learned at Vatican II, is that God wants you to be happy. Now, you might say something like, Okay, Boomer. <laughs> I just heard what that means. I'm not even a Boomer. I'm much older than that. <laughs> yeah. Well, wow. that 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 the jokes on them, right? Huh? Uh, wow. Um, okay. So you're you're a Eucharistic minister uh, when you're not singing in the choir and you're uh, uh, attending, I guess, to the needs of the other people that are also divorced there are, are it is what 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 do you th- what do you think communion actually is and and is there are are there any rules with regards to that well sometimes i bring my cat with me your cat i have two cats chloe and zoe and i named them chloe and zoe before I even met them because as the Holy Scripture says, God counted their fur balls before they were in the egg. And so Chloe and Zoe come with me to Mass sometimes, and I even take them up to this liturgy space where the presider has the table feast. And Holy Scratcher, I have to tell you guys, sometimes I take the little piece of bread and, you know, these days, mass is shorter than it used to be, but it's still not short enough. And sometimes Chloe and Zoe get a little hungry for some cat food, and so I take the bread that Father Pat gives me, and I give them a little nibbles and bits from it, and it's like a family feast, and my son, whose also name is Pat, which could be like Patricia, sometimes there were times when he was growing up when he wanted to be Patricia instead of Patrick. And I was okay with that, but Pat will sometimes bring Charlie with him, and we will all have a banquet. All are called, like my favorite song says, from the new music written by David Haas, Gather Us In. And it talks about Sing of the Lord's goodness, sing of the Lord's goodness. Oh, 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 okay, oh, Susan, to, to, Susan. Um, oh, okay, um, yeah. Let let's let's get on to the to to the next part here. Um, so so we've heard a little bit about your background and kind of what it is that you you do um, at at your church at at the very least. It seems that you're you're very involved and it's very very. 
consuming of your time. Um, so it seems like everything's pretty centered around that. Um, and you, you have your, your, your son and your, your third husband, um, and first and, and, first and, and the second one, everybody seems like you're, you're all a very mm-hmm. close family. Um, let, 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 let's talk a little the bit. Of, is very open-minded. Yeah. These days. Yeah, we get that. No, yeah. And everybody comes to the pancake breakfast that the Knights of Columbus puts on. Oh, oh, you have, oh, you we have the Knights too. We have the Knights of Columbus and we meet at University Retirement Center. But that's a man's every, organization, isn't it? Yeah. Well, are you okay with that? Thursday night, all of us who are Knights of Columbus and honorary knights. Are you an, are you a knight? I am an honorary Knight of Columbus because the average age for our chapter continues to rise, and that's why the president emeritus, Johnny Campbell, who's 89 years old, he is still in charge of our chapter, and we have pancakes breakfast on Thursday night. Now, on Friday night, we serve hot dogs and hamburgers on oh. Friday night. Every Even during Friday, Lent? We eat as much meat as we can because you're going into the weekend and like my son Pat, who is planning on partying hard, <laughs> we have to have enough protein to make it through the weekend. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, that, that that's very interesting because because Martin and I are are both Knights of Columbus. Yeah. And uh, and uh, I the uh, the whole meet on on Friday thing is is still an issue for us. I yeah. I, I, this is not about us, but I'm just. I thought these guys did fish fry, not hot dog night. Yeah. I didn't realize I was going to be on the YouTube. With a couple closed-minded Protestants. Well, well, well. Um, yeah, that's. Uh, yeah, well, Pope Francis said you shouldn't judge us, right? Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no well, labels, Susan. That's Su- a good point. Who am I to judge? And I'm so glad that you brought up Pope Francis the Great because I just watched this movie on Netflix. My son Pat showed me how to work the Netflix and it's a movie called The Two Popes. And yeah. it shows how backward, judgmental, closed minded that Hitler Pope really was. You mean Benedict Pope Benedict the sixteenth. Yes. I'm so glad that he ended up getting sick and retiring so that Francis the Great could take over and show us the truth about our ecological sins. I have never been so proud to be a Catholic. I have plastic straws on my faith-based account as the newest sin that you have to avoid. Oh, okay. Well, <clears throat> I don't know. Martin, 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 do you have any other other questions? I mean, Well, I mean, maybe the final question is, where do you think this, the church is heading? Well, how do you see the future? The church is clearly headed for brighter days ahead. We have got to open up the windows and let in the light of the world. We have much to learn from those Mexicans who still are not baptized and worship the great goddess of fertility. And I think that the new evangelization is just getting underway. John Paul 
the Great was on to something, but Francis the Greater will end up conquering all and being canonized maybe while he's still alive and without any miracles. Oh, oh, you, 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 you can do that, huh? All right. Okay. Hmm. Um, well, um, I, I, I don't, I don't have any more questions. Yeah, neither do um, I. Yeah. Um, all right. So you're on Facebook, right? Please check out my page, Susan, at the parish council and my friend, Bev, and all of my friends who are helping bring in the new evangelization. On angels' wings, uh, okay. we fly. Uh, uh, yeah, we're losing you yeah. there. I, Su- th- I think we're losing Su- you. All yeah. Our I, I, in the um. Air. Hello, Susan. Su- uh, all right. So, uh, we we we. Uh, I think we lost Susan. Um, but uh, we, it was um, uh, we we had her on. Um, and, um, so I, I know that a lot of people have been wanting to hear more from, uh, from her, um, her page is, is, is very interesting. Um, there's a lot to be uh, said on that page, uh, facebook.com Don't forward slash. The oh, she's there. Uh, whoa, she's still whoa, there. you're back. Uh, um, uh, yeah, I, I, um, uh, yep. Yeah. Um, uh, all righty. Like so, uh, we're, yeah. we're going offline. It's been, it's been a real pleasure coming to y'all again on, uh, on full disclosure. And, um, I hope that y'all have a wonderful and blessed Christmas season. Um, yeah, definitely go check out our Facebook page. Um, but, uh, best, best of luck to you on that. And, um, and we will see y'all at some point. God bless. <laughs>